Welcome to my channel. This is today's episode of Daily News Clips. But before I get to that, I do want to thank you for coming to my channel, for watching my videos, and for supporting me. I really do appreciate it. The first item that I have today is titled Big Tech Hubris and Greed Behind Digital Education Failure. And below that, the subtitle is It's Time to Go Back to Paper and Pencil. <laughs> I thought that was kind of interesting. <clears throat> I recently asked a fifth grade student to show me how he uses my path and individualized math program through Curriculum Associates Ready Math. This student has a diagnosis of ADHD and is a struggling reader. Although he understands the math concept the program presented to him, he had trouble solving problems because of the presentation on a screen. Using a computer for math increased his ADHD tendencies, impacting his reading and caused him to become so frustrated that he impulsively checked and swiped. He would have had far less difficulty if he'd been given the same problems on paper. To be sure, technology has a role in the classroom. Students must develop digital literacy and digital skills. Tech tools can also be used for enrichment and advanced instruction. <clears throat> in truth, over a decade later, it's clear that this education stuff has not worked at all. Despite billions spent, test scores have declined since then, and mental health issues among teens have risen. Well, I don't know if you can make that connection, but it was an interesting article, so I thought I'd give it to you. It's, it's something to spur some thoughts. The second article I have is titled, Blame Canada? Question mark. Justin Trudeau creates blueprint for dystopia in horrific speech bill. Now, I think we've touched on this bill previously, just briefly, but um, when I read this article, uh, I was shocked. And so I wanted to read some portions of it there. You can see it's a lengthy article, and I'm only going to go down the bottom because that's where we talk about the actual um, implementation of the bill. I heard conflicting takes on this section, and it's worth noting that Justice Minister Arif Varani has repeatedly described this offense motivated by hatred section as hateful intent mixed with a criminal offense like theft, assault, or murder. But the text reads like a parody of the American hate crime enhancement idea. The actual section reads, everyone who commits an offense under this act or any other act of parliament, if the commission of the offense is motivated by hatred based on race, national or ethnic origin, language, color, religion, sex, age, mental or physical disability, sexual orientation or gender identity or expression, is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment for life. For life. The prior restraint portion of P of C sixty three describes the process by which a person can be punished preemptively if an informant convinces a judge that either a hate propaganda offense or the aforementioned offense motivated by hatred has a reasonable chance of occurring. So now we're getting into pre crime. This is unbelievable. Fear of hate propaganda offense or hate crime. A person may, with the Attorney General's consent, lay an information before a provincial court judge if the person fears, on reasonable grounds, that another person will commit an offense. If the provincial court judge before whom the parties appear is satisfied by the evidence adduced that the informant has reasonable grounds for the fear, the judge may order that the defendant either en enter into a recog recog 
uh, recognizance to keep the peace and be of good behavior for a period of not more than 12 months. Well, I don't know about you, but I can see how this could be. <laughs> this could be abused massively by people who just have it out for someone. The Online Harms Act gets around the Charter of Freedoms, which forbids punishment of ex post facto or retroactive offenses through a clever piece of wordsmithing. It defines the hate speech crime as continuous communication of hateful speech, making the failure to take down speech on the Internet that could be removed the crime. One lawyer commented to me that this will immediately cause a flurry of activity by conservatives desperate to remove misgendering language since a previous law, C-17, mandated use of appropriate pronouns. This is unbelievable. I mean, this is just unbelievable to me. Perhaps scariest of all is the section all of the attorneys pointed to as one most likely to cause significant change in society, the snitching clause. A pair of provisions allows complainants to level accusations at no cost. If an administrative authority substantiates the claim of hateful conduct, the informant receives up to tw the informant the informant receives up to twenty thousand dollars, while the defendant pays up to fifty thousand. The incentives are pretty obvious, as one Toronto-based attorney put it. Canada, what is going on? I mean, this is unbelievable. <laughs> if I got it in for somebody, all I have to do is report them, and I get twenty grand, and they have to pay fifty. My God. If this bill passes, and I don't know if it's passed yet, but if this bill passes, free speech in Canada is over. It's over. I mean, let's be honest. Who is going to take a chance? Who is even going to take a chance when it could cost them $50,000? just to say something. That to me is just astonishing. This next article I thought might be interesting because it was Mother's Day and I thought, you know, what the heck, it's something worth reading, I suppose. New mothers need what modern medicine neglects. Today in America, we do not hold any formal ritualized postpartum tradition. The average American woman is discharged from the hospital within 48 hours of birth, and she is compelled by her employer to return to work after two weeks. The average American family lives far from relatives. The average American neighbor doesn't know what's going on next door. We are more likely to survive than our forebears, but far less likely to continue having children. TikTok is saturated with mom content describing the intense loneliness American women feel in the exile of motherhood. As Tim Carey points out in his recent book, Family Unfriendly, neither the infrastructure nor the culture of modern America is conducive to domestic harmony. Yeah. Again, a very interesting article. I, I, I give it to you. Like everything I do, I'll put the links in the description so you can read it for yourself and you might find it worth reading. Finally, there's this article from the Free Press. The American Men Seeking the American Dream in Russia. I, I went, what? <laughs> What in the world? But it's a story about American men who have gone to Russia because they feel like they're losing their freedoms in the United States. I have no idea why you would think you would find those freedoms in Russia. But um, maybe there's something I don't know about it. If any of you Russian followers are reading this, maybe you could fill me in. Is there something going on in Russia that makes it more free than America? 
I mean, it's it's not hard to believe that there's freer places in the world than America nowadays because America has gotten so corrupted. But Russia? I don't know. Anyway, all those links will be in the description, and you're welcome to read them if you choose to. Meanwhile, I'll pray for you. I pray that you have an abundant life, that you live a long time, that you're healthy, and that God keeps you safe from harm. I pray that he'll do the same for every person that you love. But I pray most of all that you will be anxious for nothing. But in all things, through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, you will make your requests known to God. And the peace that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. This is the Vietnam Era Vet, out.